Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode for the new and improved Rome 2 Emperor Edition. Or what could also be called Rome 2, the edition that it should have been over a year ago. So for this edition, we have the Imperator Augustus campaign, which is a brand new campaign. So we're going to dive right into this. There are going to be four different Roman families. We have the Lepidus Rome, basically. We have Octavian's Rome. Antony's Rome, as you can see the places they control are different here. And then Pompey's Rome, which I think is probably going to be the hardest start considering Pompey only has the, the islands there. I kind of want to play as Mark Antony's Rome because Antony was, you know, Caesar's kind of successor. He fought with Caesar, um, kind of rose to fame with Caesar, and then managed to, I believe, kill C Caesar's killers, right? Uh, let's see. Proved himself again through his subsequent victory over Caesar's killers. Yes. So he kind of has or does um, justice for Caesar's killers, so I kind of like that. So we're going to play as Mark Antony's Rome, but there are also Parthia and Armenia. We have Dacia. We have Egypt as its successor kingdoms. And, and there may be more races to this faction if they incorporate all the DLC factions they released, because I have not bought any of those DLC uh, faction packs. So those may be in here as well if I had them unlocked. I'm not sure, sorry, but I never bought, bought them. Uh, for the Britannic tribes, we have the Iceni, and then the Germanic tribes, we have the Marcomanni, which I'm pretty sure is new altogether. I don't remember that being a faction that's been released in one of their DLC packs, so it's very possible I may play them at, at a later time, because I think they're new. But anyway, for this one, we're going to play as Mark Antony's Rome. So, Roman legions, plus one recruitment slot in all of your provinces. One ruler, all Roman factions share a major diplomatic penalty with all other Roman factions. Cultural version. For Mark Antony's personal traits, disdain for plebs, public order penalty, a minimum of minus two from presence of Latin culture. That's rough. Plus three tax rate, and then Philhellenus, moderate diplomatic bonus with all Hellenic factions. Cultural affinity. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. We will play... Huh. Legendary? I don't know, like, because we have whole new systems. The, the combat has changed. It's going to be a lot longer. Armor has been increased. Damage has been increased. The political system has gone over a huge rebalance. Now, from what they say, you're not forced into a um, civil war, no matter what. You can't actually kind of manipulate the political system so that you don't. So since all these new systems are here, do I play on Legendary? No, I'll play on Very Hard. I'll do that. How about that? We'll play on Very Hard for this one. Wrap my mind around the whole new um, changes of this Emperor Edition. Learn the political part of this game, because I have not had to pay attention to the political part of Rome 2 for like eight months, because I've been playing the Radius mod, which basically just takes it all out, because it was stupid and broken. I hated their political system, because it forced you into a civil war no matter what. There was nothing you could do to change that. I thought that was so silly. And at least now you have the option of maybe not doing that. But anyway, here we go. You are my son. But I've done all I can to protect you. The gods smile on you. Octavian, you're a good soldier. I'm a politician. We don't need more politicians. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. Why do you think Caesar favored you so? I was loyal. No, Octavian. He saw in you the potential to continue his legacy. Not to follow him, but to exceed him. Antony cannot be trusted. His heart lies in Egypt. We must confront the reality that civil war is inevitable. And how will bloodshed save the people of Rome? You are not meant to save them. You are meant to lead them. All men are troubled when their moment has come. I am not Caesar. I don't have his strength. The people loved him, and they will love you. You can't think like an ordinary man. You must reach beyond mortal ambition and do what has never been done. The 
survive, my son. Rome must have a master. So they're definitely making this movie out to be just like Octavian versus Antony, which, I mean, that, yeah, that obviously happened. It's kind of funny that they didn't even mention Having Lepidus and Pompey. received the lion's share of the Republic Pompeii. and its challenges, you were locked into a deadly struggle with Parthia in the east. They wish to rob you of valuable client states. You may save them and counterattack deep into Parthian territory, or sacrifice these provinces to buy yourself time elsewhere. In the Balkans, your Thracian allies are threatened by deadly nomadic tribes from the north. Invading the region will give you a springboard to Rome, should your fragile triumvirate collapse. This, after all, is your ultimate goal, and should be pursued with unswerving dedication. Greatness beckons you. Follow its trail to the bitter end. Ooh, okay. So we start where, I guess, Macedonia was. Okay. <laughs> Objective issued. Completely control 17 provinces either by direct ownership or through client state and military allies. Okay, so here we are. <laughs> we have client states apparently in Thracia. Actually, let's just open up the diplomacy. Oh, wow, those icons have changed. Okay, so who do we have? Antony's Rome. We are military allies with Oh, sorry, defensive with uh, Lepidus and Octavian. I'm sure that will break down eventually. We are currently at war with Persia, Palmyra. I always call these, them the elephant people. The uh, Drang Drangiana, Paradine, Characene, and Parthia. I don't even recognize some of these names. All right, let me actually look at the map here. So... Oh, Judea. Wow. So we are at war with Parthia... Them, them. Oh, I wonder if these are client states of Parthia, maybe? How is that set up? Let's see. Parthia has, yep, Persia, Palmyria, yep, 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 okay. So I'm at war with Parthia, and then through them, war with all of their client states right back here. Okay. Antony's Rome. That's really cool. Your client states, oh my goodness. I just kind of looked down. Okay, so Pontus, right there. We have Galatia, we have Thrace, Cappadocia, Cappadocia? A lot of these names are new to me. Cappadocia, where are you at? Where the heck are you at? Oh my goodness, staring me right, right in the face. Okay, gotcha. The Nabate? Really? We have them as a client state? We have Judea as a client state, Egypt as a client state, and Armenia. Armenia, there you are. So, we control... Um, we actually control all of these already, and then we have all of these guys, well, all of these nations as our client state. Wow! That is insane! That we own so much. Okay, probably not going to be too much action in this first episode, because I need to learn what the hell my situation is. Alright, so Thrace is reliable. That is awesome. Let us initiate diplomacy. Greetings! Speak plainly and without idle Trade agreement. purpose, and all will be well. 373, okay. We definitely want to try and keep the reliable people as our friends. So next we have Pontus. Pontus. Treacherous. Okay. Hmm. Not going to worry about them too much then. Galatia is reliable. They are also Celtic. So we may butt heads over that. What are... Okay, so we are Latin. So Galatia is another one that we're going to want to kind of secure our friendship with. Trade now agreement. Speak. By all the okay. gods, your word hold is golden truth. I agree with my heart and tongue to all you say. Thank you, client state. Ah, treacherous. Okay, well, we can do trade, Welcome, but... Welcome, friend. Welcome. Come, sit. Cool. Eat. 
I will accept this in my lord's I won't um, for he trusts my judgment. I won't actively try to protect them. I'm not going to go after anybody who's not reliable. Especially not treacherous. Judea is treacherous. Interesting. They are an eastern. Okay. Okay. Uh, but we can, of course, Speak start trade. And burden yourself. We have so I won't reason to try to protect them. Egypt I will, though, because that just makes sense. I mean, come on, Mark Antony and Egypt were pretty close, you could say. Um, they are devious, but now we're just going to have to kind of deal with it. Who do we have next? Armenia? Also devious. But they already kind of like us. Alright, well, we can't even trade with them right now. So the allies I want to definitely protect would be Thrace, Egypt, Galatia, right? Yeah. And luckily, those are the ones that are kind of the closest to me. So the other ones I can serve up as a sacrifice. Oh, wait, the Nabate, right? They're probably... Oh, they're unreliable. That's not too terrible. That's not too terrible. Okay. Pompey's room. Oh, cool. That looks new. Octavian himself. Hello, Octavian. How are you doing? Let's see if we can trade with each other. Greetings in the name of the state and so forth. Now, <laughs> what do you want? Can we not have trade amongst us two? No? We have okay. no taste for your Alright. Well, that's enough on the screen for right now. We have five thousand in our treasury. Predicted almost ten thousand. Food surplus of sixty-two. Technology. I'm sure this has changed a little bit. So we start with supply reforms and land management already researched. Okay, that's cool. Let's see what we got here. Manipular organization. Plus 25% ammunition for all missile units and enables the recruitment of rank 1 champions. Okay, we could then get morale and the practice field. So some of the buildings have changed. New buildings have been added. I think some buildings have been taken away. And just um, changes in general. Practice field will give us plus one army recruitment capacity. Which from that we can then go into... Target stand, practice castrum. Plus one army recruitment capacity, 5% melee infantry, melee attack. Minus one food. Cav. Infantry defense. Combat posts. Okay, does this unlock any units? I don't think they would, would they? No. Yeah, okay. Alright, and then Siege, we start with uh, Battering Ram. Already. Interesting. So this will enable the building of the Blacksmith. That's different, right? You didn't get the Blacksmith through this tech, did you? I can't remember. Maybe you did. Then on the other side here, we start with Iron Tools. So we have Slave Trader. Cool. Wealth from Agriculture. Okay. Shops. That's definitely new. What do shops do? 200 wealth from local commerce minus 3 food. The Kiln will give us 10% wealth from Agriculture, 20% wealth from Commerce, Base Wealth, and Public Order. Then the Wine Trader. Okay. Okay. That's definitely new. Stadium, what do you do? Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Stadium. Auditorium. 80 wealth from entertainment and public order. Okay. Okay. Oh, whoops. That's our dignitary. Yes. And the library. Enem 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 <laughs> Enameler. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so what does this do? Oh, we can get the mint, more commerce, and this is industry. Hmm. What to grab first? Plus one growth in all provinces. Growth is pretty pretty good for the beginning of the game. Hmm. Let's do that. It's only going to take two turns. We'll get that next. 
Oh, shoot. Right, you can't queue in this game. Whoops, sorry. I've been playing too much Endless Legend right now where you can just queue up all your techs. Um, all right, so we'll start with that. So here's our capital. Holy crap. Okay. We get wealth. Unlocks recruitment of vigiles and levies. We have a practice field right here. We have the consecrated ground. Um, let's see. Currently minus eight public order. Okay. Let's go into details here. Corruption minus 19%. Oh my god. Minus seven from cultural differences, taxes, and slaves. Great. Okay. Shrine of Neptune. Hmm. Plus three. Nah, I don't really want to focus on slaves. Wealth from entertainment culture. Latin cultural influence, wealth from culture. Romanization edicts, plus two conversion to Latin culture. Public order per turn, Latin culture, wealth from all sources, and increased harvesting. Or tax rate. What was our culture here? We're only at 50%. Is that on the rise or fall? Oops. Uh, where do we go here? Latin culture is going down. Hellenic is going up. Okay. Well, we do not want that. No. Okay. Now, I think it's between this... Let's get the Shrine of Jupiter. Alright, so now we can get a Garrison Colonia or a Civil Colonia. Okay, so what's the difference here? Growth, Wealth, Culture Influence, Growth, Public Order, Some Wealth, and Better Garrison. Hmm. This gives us more wealth, which I guess makes sense. Gives us a lot more growth. Doesn't give us the public order per turn. But still... Let's go with the civil... Well, hold on. Let's see if this what, what this goes into. Alright, so just provides local garrison. Does it provide recruitment options? No. Come on, get back up. Okay. What about this? Local garrison. All right, so we're not going to actually get any recruitment options from the, these things anyway. Uh, let's start with the civil colonia, I guess. We also have a horse trainer, a field of Mars to get legionnaires. Oh, weird. Village vineyard. And it's purple. Oh, this is a village. Right, this is a village. What the heck? This has changed. So... Wow, okay, because normally these have the same icons as these, basically, but this, now they're all separate. Okay, so village horse trainers, so plus one growth, livestock, agriculture, level one horses, and provides garrison of that. And then the vineyard will give us wine for trade, public order growth, commerce, okay, wow, these are all, this is all different. Whew, and this is just the first damn city, or... Uh, province. All right, let's go down here to Sparta. What is Sparta? Marble pit. Marble minus 10% construction costs. 100 wealth from industry. Okay. We also have a field of Mars down here. Level one port. The aqueduct. Hmm. Okay. Province capital. So many things. Alright, we got another marble pit. We have a basic village there. What is this? Grain pits. Wealth from farming, army re replenishment rates. Alright, so the wealth is the same. One less food as a herding ground. And then that's the least wealth, most food. Okay, I see. Huh. Okay. That's, yeah, it's not us. And then we have a... 
province down here. Industry, okay. Wow, so many things. Only 1,000 left and we have so many things we can do. Uh, what about these two? Start with the field of, oh no, it's a practice field. Fishing, marble, basic village. Well, it makes sense, I guess, to start with our capital. So we will expand here. And I think we'll go with a public forum for right now. Yeah, let's go with the public forum. And then where are our armies? Like your first Adior tricks. You have some Vigiles. Oh, jeez. I forgot how bad they were. All right. And levies. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Not that great. Oh, my God. Vigiles. Our general. Legio the second. Vigiles and those. There we go. Okay. At least we get an actual legionnaire. It's quite a jump. Oh, my goodness. The upkeep costs. Whoa. No bonus for infantry. I heard that... Bonus for infantry has been taken out of most units in this game. They still have a pretty decent bonus for large, though. 47 attack, 35 weapon damage. Melee defense of 48, armor of 80. Health of 60. Armor of 80? As a basic legionnaire? I guess I did hear the armor has been upgraded, but holy crap. Okay. And Velites. Your core spear throwers, or javelin throwers. And then up here, we have more Vigilates and Levies. Okay. Oh, jeez. Alright, so who... Are these guys at war with anybody? I forgot to check that. No, they're not at war with anybody. Neither are they, neither are they. Okay. Making sure there weren't any predetermined wars before we even jump into the game. Alright, let's, I guess, end the turn. Do we have any ships? I forgot to check that. We do have a spy. How can I be of assistance? In Egypt. Huh. Oh, wow. Lepidus' Rome is right there. Okay. Okay. Nasamones. Sorry. I need to know who they are tied with. They are at war with Egypt. Okay, excellent. But we are not at war with them. Right? No. Okay. That's a potential way of getting Egypt further into our side, is joining their war. Maybe it's a little too early to go to war, though. Hmm. I don't know. I feel we would need an army in Egypt. Let's just ship these guys down there. Why not? Oh, that's right. I need to go to the political screen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I forgot about this. Okay, so important characters. The Antionis, Antionis dynasty. So we have Marcus and Lucius. Marcus is a general. You are a statesman. We have in the other houses. We already have two generals, three generals. And two statesmen. Oh, my goodness. Traits and household, Cleopatra. Plus two food all regions. Plus two gravitas per turn. Minus four influence per turn for your political party faction-wide. That is pretty funny. That is pretty funny. Use your influence to promote this character to a higher office. Military Tribune, which would give us plus 3% tax rate. An additional gravitas. And minus two upkeep for all land units. His army only, I'm assuming? Um... Now, this is a system I did not really pay attention to because I didn't have to. Gravitas represents characters' importance and contributes to their party's influence. The higher the gravitas, the higher the chance of increasing this influence. So we want to definitely keep their influence high. But already we have some high influence from these other families, particularly this person. Which we would want to spread rumors about, but it costs money to do so. Minus nine senators. Is senators like this gravitas? Because, I mean, that's like the picture of a senator. Hmm. 
Hmm. Whoa, okay, here we go. This is new, I think. Yeah. Influence. 65%. Oh, here we go. So we hold 327 of the 500 senators in, I guess, our pocket or on our side. Here's the Civil War indicator, which is awesome. Uh, you are supreme, holding the balance of power but without threatening anyone. Ah, I see. So we give just enough influence to the other houses to the point where they wouldn't want to have a civil war. Our influence is currently admired, which gives us more research rate. Public order per turn all provinces, plus tax rate and morale. And what is... Oh, is this just a visual representation? Oh, no, these are the steps. Okay, beloved, exalted, peerless. So we are currently this far into beloved, I'm assuming. Yeah. Cool. Summary. Imperium level 5. As your faction grows, so does the problem of keeping it under control. So the Imperium level 5 we're currently at. 15% public order penalties due to local presence of foreign cultures. Plus 2 influence per turn to your political party. That's, I guess, a positive. Plus 48% political action costs. Plus 12% political incident occurrence. I guess that's a chance of negative political events happening. Plus 10% corruption in your provinces, which is bad. And expansionism, minus 10 to diplomacy with all factions, is what Imperium Level 5 is giving us. Okay, I'm glad they break this all down. There's our influence, the House of Antony. And there's our Rome trait. Food surplus is giving us those things. And here's our diplomacy window. Again, this is basically a screen that I ignored for the past 8 months because I've been playing the Radius mod where all the politics were ripped out of the game because they sucked. So I'm pretty new to this. Okay. Alright, now! How about we end the turn? Never mind, let's not end the turn yet. I forgot, we do have to do edicts. Romanization. Commercial simulation. Bread and games. Whoa, that's changed. 15% tax rate. That's gone a lot higher, if I am remembering correctly. Let's do this. And how many edicts can we have? Doesn't usually tell us, like, right there. Hold on. Edicts. One of two. Okay, so we can have another one. Let's go into this screen, our province screen, see what else is giving us the most money. So, this province of Archaea. Archaea? Is giving us a lot of the money there. Okay, so let's do bread and games here as well to try and counteract this negative public order for this province. Cool. Boom! First turn, 28 minutes in. What? Longest turn. Oh! Really? What? <laughs> the first turn? Octavian and Lepidus are going to war already? Octavian has no allies. That's odd. Lepidus is, has Octavian as their ally still. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, I don't want to... Uh, <laughs> oh, shoot. Do we piss off Octavian or Lepidus right now? I think, I think we, decline, or maybe not, because Octavian was like our strongest opponent, or was Antony's strongest opponent, right? From what little I know, I'm not an historian, so maybe this is a time to bring him down. And I'm allies with both of them, so I'm, but I'm assuming I'm entering the war of... Lepidus, right? On Lepidus' side? Okay. Wow, man. First turn. First turn, the factions of Rome go to war with each other, and Pompey is just sitting back on the islands like... <laughs> it's like, let them destroy each other. Uh, we'll come in and... Kill them. That was pretty quick. This alliance is broken. Yep. As your power increases, so does the need to develop your military capabilities and civic infrastructure, which is of greater importance to you. Well, considering we're doing civic stuff, we'll boost that up. Okay. 
So now we are at war with Octavian's room. It's bound to happen sooner or later. It's a little faster than I had originally anticipated, but you know, hey, whatever. Let's go with it. Why not? Oh boy. Let's garrison a coastal city, because that makes more sense, I think. And I didn't even look at the military units, did I? Oh, and the stances. Oh my goodness. Forced March. I have not played with Forced March, because, again, that's another feature taken out by the Radius mod. I forgot about this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, alright. Force March into the city. That's funny. Oh yeah, we can rename. Household item. Traits. Okay. Okay. Uh, this army now, I'm thinking we actually keep up here, because now we're going to need all the help we can get. Let's move them up into Apollonia. And I will not force march them. Let us instead recruit some additional legionnaires. There we go. Recruit four of them. Let us focus still on the capital of Macedonia here. Expand that. And a meeting place. Wealth from commerce. I think this is going to be a commerce focused area. Yeah, because we have this vineyard here. So yeah, let's go commerce in this province. So we'll grab the meeting place. You know, a meeting place. Do we... Upgrade. Let's upgrade the settlement, the vineyard, to a large vineyard. And, huh, war dogs. Wow, we can get the first cohort and legionary calf from this. It's going to manipulate our barracks. Yeah, let's go with that. Seems to be a good place to have that kind of barracks, considering how close we are to Octavian's Rome. I think that's a good call. Oh, Navisos. Whoops. Lead mine. Okay. Sure, let's expand you, and then we'll grab a pit mine. Why not? Why not? Although public order is kind of a problem in this place, actually. Now that I think about it, hold on. Let's grab a consecrated ground instead. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that'd be better. Okay. Whew, so much to do. Let's upgrade this city to... Uh, I don't know. Nah, we'll do the civil again. And then we'll upgrade... How about the Spartan settlement to a marble quarry? Which gives us minus 20% construction costs. Which I think is a good thing to have towards the beginning of a province's lifetime. So we'll grab that. We only have 95 left. We're getting a lot of money next turn. And I think I'm going to call this episode here. So hopefully we'll... I guess... Well, not hopefully, but we may get into combat in the next episode against Octavian here, who controls quite a lot. Let me... Before we end, let me actually see what Octavian... So that's what he controls, but he probably has client states. Belgay... Belgai Gay? It's probably up here somewhere. Oh, probably right up there. Gaul is an actual faction now. Okay, so Gaul is most likely right there in Gallia. And the Helvetii, I believe, were somewhere over here. Hmm. I think they were over here somewhere. Actually, it's probably them right there. Maybe. Okay. Alright. Pompeii. Man, poor Pompeii. <laughs> they have nothing. Just those islands. Anyways, that's going to do it, everybody. So, hope you enjoyed. I will see you all in the second episode. And the possible start of our war with Octavian, I guess. Take care.